This is a part that I always enjoy doing, and I've asked Lau to uh, take us for a tour of the IQ for back. And I'm going to turn this over to Lau and uh, let him show it to you. But as I said in an earlier video, I was able to pick this interface up standing on the edge of a rock photographing a waterfall without having an instruction manual and just kind of, I'll use the word finagling <laughs> yes. as I went. And that, uh, you know, you might hit the wrong button or it might do a couple of mistakes, but you'll learn pretty quick what it is. And once you get the hang of it, it's beautiful. So I'll take it away. Yeah, so we've said that we've tried to design it so that the functionality you need is kind of where you need it. Yep. So you don't have to go out and back and over to a menu and back and in and back to where you were. So when, when you turn it on, there is no longer the home screen. All of our previous digital packs have had a home, home screen, screen you start with. Yep. Or you can say that what we have now here, the camera tool, is the it's home kind screen. of a home screen. It's just with so a you lot more stuff. Start up here, and uh, this essentially gives you control of, uh, of the camera as such. The left side here is almost a one-to-one -one copy of what is on top, on the top of the XF. Camera handle. So that controls the, the exposure, um, as you can do on the XF as well. And if you work it from, uh, from the XF, it changes there, or you can work it from uh, directly from... Um, can you touch it and make it you, work? You can touch it from here, and you can set the aperture. You can, uh, can change that, or you can change uh, if you use Auto, you can change the range. It's allowed to to uh, have and the aperture. Set, you can set the range also, which is yes. pretty cool. So, yes. uh, if you don't want it to go below f twenty two and have refraction issues, you can say stop at sixteen. Exactly, or exactly. Or with with uh, with shutter speed or ISO, you can set the ranges. You will allow the ISO to. Why to hasn't use. anybody else thought of that? So we signed so that each of those three parameters, okay. ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, you can set them to auto, kind of independently. Okay. Then on the right side here are the, the capture controls. There'll be a capture button, a live view button, an autofocus button, and then some settings for the file. So the top up here, there's a white balance. You can click the white balance and set that one. You can click the file format, would be the, the compression, the bit depth, and so on. And you can uh, select uh, the different types of styles. So um, if I was shooting a landscape, I would just touch it? You just touch that one, and you would mm -hmm. now be, uh, ha have selected this uh, capture one landscape style. Um, if we go into live view, the, the camera opens up uh, the shutter and we are now in live view and we can do focusing we fo here. We have focus peaking turned on so we yes. can see the little you know, green And while in there. live view, uh, any settings for that, they live on swipe in from the side menus. So I swipe this one in and this one turns uh, focus peaking on and off. So we can see the little blue dot means that it's, it's turned on. If there's a triangle in the corner, it means that I can long press it, and there will be additional settings. So for example, with the focus peaking, that one, if I long press that at the moment, it just has a threshold. So I can change this threshold. Uh, I can lower it a bit now. It will have, uh, have more of Lowering uh, the threshold allows it to see more contrast in, in similar colored areas. Yes, yeah, so it will, it, will, it will add more of the green shimmer. Right, so if you're having difficulty doing focus peaking, then you want the lower threshold. Yeah. If you're working with something with a lot of different contrasts and so forth, you begin it to also de It depends a lot on your subject matter and your lens and uh, so on, which uh, we are still working on the algorithms there, but uh, we believe that having that ability to, to tweak it uh, is a good thing. In live view also, you can, you can pinch to zoom in. You can, let's look at Nemo here. Oh, not bad. And you can then focus on the little guy there. You can also double tap to zoom to 100%. Wow, look at that. Nemo never looks so good. Like for critical focusing. Yep. On the other side there. So right side always are kind of view settings. Left side are actions. So right now we have a shutter release. So yes. So in live view on the left, on the right side, we had the settings for, uh, for the focus peaking and some other views. Mm -hmm. On the, on the left side, we have actions, including a shutter button. I click that one, it takes a picture. So in live view mode, this would be particularly good, say, as a, if I was a food photographer. Uh, yep. I could be using and uh, working in live view and never have to go out of live view to take my photograph. Yes. And you know, be able to do my critical focus, bring in my shutter release button, just tap on it. I don't have to touch the camera. I don't have to do anything more. Yes. I mean, you know, touch it with a shutter release up, the, up at the handle. I can do it all right from the back. Yeah. And the other view settings we see here in live view are um, grids. I can click that one, I turn on the grids. If I long press that, right. again, the logic of there's a triangle there, 
I get into the grid settings, I can change properties of the grid. So anytime you've got a, a setting here with a, a, a triangle in the upper right hand corner, it means there's more options. There's more there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pop-up menu right. indicator. Yeah. So if you hold, touch and hold it, you get the pop-up menu, right? If I touch and hold that one, okay. I get here, I can select different types of grids. There you go. And there will be more settings for the grid, the color grid, and, yep. and so on there. Um, the, the last setting here, the top one, will turn on histograms. So now I have uh, an RGB histogram and a, and a raw histogram. And this is a very dark scene, so you can yep. see they're almost all the way to the left there. But we um, can fix that with a shutter speed adjustment. Ah, not that dark. But there you go. So let's get back to the... Yeah, so the way I navigate around here is that I, in all screens, I can always swipe up from the bottom and I get the shortcuts. These are camera tool, thumbnails, the viewer with tools on the side, full screen viewer, live view, and main menu. And they always live in a swipe up from the bottom. I can always get to that and I can navigate to any of, any of these other screens here. So what I noticed yesterday when I was using this, when I was like in live view or something, I would have to end up, I would hit this button yes. over here and that would give me that same one and I had to keep pushing it to get back to the actual camera mode itself. Yes, so, the, so if you are not, if, you, if you're in a cold environment, you're wearing gloves, you cannot use a touch screen, we do the same thing with buttons. So this up here is kind of the, the it's kind of out tapping through the screens. Right. So I, I so can just, just stop on the one you I want. I can click that and I can go to anywhere I, I want to go. Okay. In addition to that, from, uh, from the top down, you can see that on the top here, there's kind of a status bar so we have with, with battery. The next one is a camera. If that is white, everything is good to go. Okay. If it's red, something is preventing the camera from taking a capture. Um, XQD, SD markers, they're just both in there the and they're ready. Thing. USB and Ethernet, they're gray, meaning that I'm not connected to either. Okay. I actually have an Ethernet cable plugged in, but at the moment I'm just using the power Ethernet to power the camera. Okay. Um, and then... Um, Exposure's and a, left? And a, yeah, exposure's oh. left on the card, or on the current storage. If I swipe down from the top, I get most more info, essentially. So here I get in-depth info, I get the, the current battery situation and any charging information. Uh, camera's ready for capture. If it wasn't ready for capture, I would be told why it was not ready for capture. I can see that on Ethernet, I have uh, no IP address. So there's no server on the other end of that cable, just a power supply. USB is disconnected. XQD is present. There's a capacity of 112 images with my current compression rate. SD is present. There can be 164 images in that one. I can go further down here. Sensor temperature is 46.7 degrees. It's relatively hot. We've been running live view for a while, uh, also before we started this. And Wi-Fi is disabled. So this essentially is my, um, my status screen and also my way into settings for all of this. So if I clicked the, the Wi-Fi, I would get into the Wi-Fi menu. And you could pick the Wi-Fi network and do password. Yes. And that would Set up a password, pick the network, and then then to wireless. But but essentially the point is that from this menu here that I can always get to, I can see the, the status for the for the entire system, and I can just click that status button and get to the settings for that status. So swiping down gives you all the different settings and status. Swiping up gives you the camera functions. Yeah, navigation uh, so between the, the, main, the main modes. Yeah. Sleeping, sweeping or swiping from the right gives you, depending on whether you're in the capture mode or the live view mode, different options such as yeah. RGB, you know, histogram, focus, uh, yeah. peaking, so, so, uh, so, so in this screen here, the, if I swipe in from the right, I, get, I can get to the virtual horizon. Um, if I go into the full screen viewer, for example, in here, I have from, uh, from the right, I have some different view um, tools. I can get to the histogram. I can do, uh, get some, uh, some metadata. I can enable some, uh, some highlight warnings. This yeah. exposure is not overexposed, but I could long press that one. I could enable also the, the shadow and the highlight, all the warnings here. Now I can see that part of the image is very very dark. Now so this kind of also a, has a triangle. So um, yes. Well, when I use this, I normally set my highlights and shadows at you know this is my preference, uh, fifteen and two forty-five. So let's do that. We long press that one. 
we go in here to the threshold and we set it to set shadow to 15 roughly 15 i do and that then i can recover that and then 245 lets me know i'm getting towards my 255 so that still says i'm recoverable in some of those areas so that's just but now we've got that and it's easy to yeah. to, to work they, so again right side are view settings for my current view and then left side are actions at the moment the, the the only action i can take here and as you can see, there's space for more actions. We build this so that we can grow with uh, and add more and more features. I can get into a deleted rating. So here I can either give it a rating. I can, uh, depending on how nice I see. And this delete. becomes part of the metadata that gets. It's put into the file. It becomes the part of the metadata. Yes. Yep. Or I can click delete, and it will ask me, "Do I really want to delete this file?" The other views are are similar. If I go to thumbnail. to the thumbnails here, I can browse. Uh, I can browse the thumbnails. Now, if I wanted to pick one of those, so I just tap on it. So I just uh, I just tap on it, and I get, get back to that instantly. one. Very very yeah. fast. You see this one? You actually shot uh, yesterday with, with the, the black and white style enabled. So the, the the preview there is is rendered in black and white. Also in this here, I can uh, I can adjust the the view mode um, so that I can turn all of these overlays off if I. Um, I can, I can select what I want in the overlay. Just so you don't overdo the... If I just, if just want this little, little indicator yeah. that these are shot to both the SD and XQD, yep. as an example. Um, if I, I can also tap it and completely turn it off if I don't want anything on top of there. Maybe for, uh, for reference purposes, I might want to have the, the file name there if I want to remember which file was what, or I want to see the, I want to see the ratings. Sure. So essentially this gives me, again, I can... Can you lock an image so that... Like you can't delete it? Um, no, but that, that's that, that could definitely be done. Well, it wouldn't be nice if I had a, in an engine, I could say, well, that's a four star and I want to yeah, lock yeah, that baby so I can't that, delete that it by accident. Make sense. You can see the, the way you delete from, like right. more batch delete, that, that's an action. So that lives on the left. I click that one. Now I'm in delete mode. I can select which files I would like to delete. I swipe back in and I click the delete button. It asks me, do you really want to delete these four files? Now I will say no. Because I, yeah. Um, or I can um, let's mark some more here. Maybe I might mark them, and uh, I can clear the marking, or I can mark all files. So again, kind of basic wow. file operations. But you could imagine things like I want to delete any files that I've not given a star oh, rating. Yeah, lock me an image. So I, I will I, please mark all files for deletion that I gave less than one star. Okay. Or you know, like a filter. Things one things one. like that. Yeah. Or. Any image that I gave more than three stars, please process them out to JPEGs to the SD card. We also have this this view here that uh, is a bit like what we've had on uh, on the iQs with uh, with your tools on the right. And again, but the difference here is that this actually is a full viewer, and you can uh, you can zoom in here and do the, yeah, the so zooming and panning thing. Than it used to be. You know, when I set this up, um, if I can just interfere for a second, mm -hmm. I just want to see how this is works now. This. In, in it, does this scroll? Not not yet, no, but not yet. Uh, but definitely as we add more tools to this one, that one will scroll. Will be so you'll be able to press it and show where yeah. you want it in the list and so forth. Yes. I always had mine so that the histogram, no matter which way I went, it was always showing in, in each view. Yeah. So I moved it to the bottom, and then if I scrolled up, the histogram was still there. Mm. Because to me, that as I've said before, that's like that's my golden holy grail there. You know. Yeah. But as with uh, with the IQ3, if you click any of yep. these, you get it applied to the... Oh, that's a nice looking mask there. To, though, to the whole, that's a, whole image That's there. so... And it's transparent too, which is cool. Uh -huh. Very cool. So that's kind of the, the grand overview. Of course, there's also, there's also the, uh, the main menu for any settings that uh, are kind of not used all the time. Okay. They, they live in here in, uh, so in, in the a, menu system. So this is a scroll. So we have... Starting at the top, you'd have XF menu, storage yeah. setup, network settings. These are kind of set once and kind of not. Yeah, they're used. kind of set and forget settings. Yeah. yeah. HDMI security settings. What can you do for security? You can settings? essentially you can lock the camera. Okay. You can you can uh, you can set up a pin code. You can lock it so that either like like your cell phone. Right. So that if somebody steals it, they can't use it, or if you do. Um, Maybe a studio shoot where the camera's in one location, but you are actually operating remotely. You can just lock the user interface, okay. so nobody can can change settings. So a number of different uh, locking levels there.
So essentially what is here is relatively simple and settings that you don't change all the time. Yeah. And everything else is kind of on your think under your fingers where you really need them. So once again, it's I think this is the intuitive part of actually sitting down and you know playing with it. So I can go to an aperture priority by that, mm -hmm. change my shutter speed. No, because it's an auto. Ah, so I have to undo the auto. Yeah. So you just got to kind of make sure if something doesn't work, don't freak out. See. Yeah, and the, and the logic there is anything that's blue is an auto and controlled by the system. Okay. And and that means that you cannot change that one because you asked the. And we've got the ranges. Yes. And oh, if, uh, if I one think... of the things we, we have vibration. We have, this is something I think is really cool, and maybe we just should show that real quick if we can. Will it show on the back now? Um, no, no, it won't actually. It's, it's you, you, you can set it from there, but but what essentially that does is that um, there are some accelerometers in the camera, and uh, the, the, we, you can set a delay from pressing the shutter button to actually actuating the shutter, so that all the vibration from the mirror moving up and from you touching the camera dies out. And that can be based either on just a fixed delay, wait four seconds, or wait until vibration dies down. And then I as agree. long as there's movement, it, it waits once it's settled. Yeah, I, I, I've used that many times. I, I remember in Iceland, we were having one of those breezy days and I had mm. the camera all set up and I set it. And sometimes I'd have to wait for a minute, but boy, once it calmed down, the camera took the picture. And, yes. You know, you just want the, the camera just stopped vibrating. But the, we we can... see that both in both for actually avoiding the vibration of initiating the capture, yeah. but also in cases like that where it's the wind or it's uh, on a kind of a, a unstable wooden floor with people walking around and now it's stable. Yep. Fire. Boats, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you, you've got networking, right? And mm -hmm. we've got a, a storage menu, which I'd like to, to see. Yes, uh, so. I can, maybe I can go it, into it by, by showing that on this screen, there are all the kind of the settings you will change most often. Okay. Like the, there's, the, there's the file format there that you can set from here. But you can also set that from, from within the the menu here, if I go so into... So your, your menu is assessed by pushing the bottom left button and holding it. I either push and hold this one or I swipe up from the bottom I'm and I click the, the, the menu. Okay. So, so that file setting we saw before, that of course also is inside the file settings here where I can get to the same menu. Right. But here I also have the other file related session, uh, all other file related ses settings in one group. So anything related to, to, the, to the file format all lives there. And the same with... Uh, Go out here, networking settings. I again here have have all the details for enabling the network, wi wireless network, setting up uh, bonjour or discovery. All of that all lives yep. lives kind of in in that menu um, for for storage. You can set this to auto. That just means it will use whatever whatever is whatever, whatever it gets whatever uh, cabled connection whatever storage is there. It'll just use it and it'll try to make sense. Okay. If I uh, if I set it to auto, then I can I can select uh, where I want to do it and my my priorities between uh, between the the different targets. I can set the the SD up to either do an archive where it uh, kind of backs up Area. to SD card or I can set it to do JPEGs over to the SD card. So the number of different uh, So we're just clicking on yep. this. JPEG only, archive mode, or off. Yes. Okay. So I said, don't touch the SD card or make JPEGs onto it or, or give me a backup to that one of my of raw cake. files. How, how sweet is that? Card formatting for both the two different yes. cards. To be able to see the menu system at the IQ4 and how different it is from any other camera system out there really gives you some thought on what the possibilities are and you know, why aren't other camera manufacturers looking at some of this kind of innovation? I mean, they're so stuck on the linear type menus where, you know, yours are so intuitive, you know, touch, hold, go deeper into and, you know, find the settings that you want. My hat's off to you. Is It always is because, I mean, I'm just always blown away by what we're seeing. But I hope as uh, our readers and our viewers look at this, they realize that sometimes what you see here is sometimes what you're going to see down the road somewhere else, you know, on some other things. Um, you know, phase one's cutting edge, 
You know, they're small enough to move fast. It's not a big battleship that can't make the curve and turn, you know, slow. These guys can turn on a dime. And I think we're going to see some pretty cool things from FaZe. This is, I think, a really cool step in the right direction as far as, number one, 151 megapixels, but just the ability to interface with the camera and get the kind of shot that you want. So once again, thanks. Uh, we still have more things to cover, and uh, uh, we'll look at those in some of the uh, next couple episodes, but uh, that was really enlightening. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Good. And we'll see you guys on the next episode.